Hello and welcome to another episode of Forge Talks. Now the world of digital identity is a sprawling landscape of lingo and terminology and it can be a little uh, difficult to stay on top of what everything is and what everything means. Now being a veteran of the digital identity world I could obviously explain all of these things to you in immense detail but sometimes it's nice to let someone else have a go. And so I'm uh, very pleased to welcome my good friend and VP of Product and Solution Marketing at Forge Rock, Ashley Stevenson. Ashley, welcome to Forge Talks. Fraser, thank you. It's so great to be here with you today. Ashley, we're talking today about single sign-on or SSO, right? Mm-hmm. Are you sure you don't want to be the one to explain that? I mean, we could we could flip the flip it around a little bit and have some fun. <laughs> oh, I, I I would love to, but really, no, I'm I'm happy to let you take this one. All right. So tell me, what cool. what is single sign on? <laughs> so I mean, single sign on is really a technical capability that makes it easier for people to have a good online experience, and it does that by allowing you to sign in one time and then go to a lot of other applications, websites, mobile apps, and things like that, depending on what you're doing, and not have to enter your credentials again. And through the process of doing that, it also increases security, and it also can help the organization save costs on things like password reset calls to the help desk um, and so forth. So we know that nobody likes passwords and nobody enjoys the process of logging in to an account, nobody wakes up in the morning and says, gee, I can't wait to do that, right? <laughs> and so <laughs> we, but also as we're in an increasingly digital world and not uh, with each other as much in the physical world anymore, um, we have to log into a lot of different applications, whether that is in our personal life or our professional life and everything in between, there's a lot of logging in to do and passwords are no fun. They introduce security risks and they really uh, can hurt the experience. And so single sign-on really is a collection of a lot of different pieces and parts of identity management brought together with a focus on those three things, a better experience, more security, and saving the organization cost. Great. And so like you, like you mentioned, we're used to a much more digital world today. I wonder if there is any comparison to a physical world example that you can use to help us understand single sign-on a little better. Well, do you remember, Fraser, and most of the audience will remember a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away <laughs> when we used to go to conferences and we used to see each other in person. Now, this could be a, a trade show, you know, a tech trade show that I think many of us are used to attending. Mm -hmm. It could also be going to the theater. It could be um, events. It could be a visitor pass at the office. But why don't we go through and talk a little bit today about how single sign-on is very much like attending a, a conference uh, in person. How's that, that sound? Sounds good. Yeah, it sounds great. Very nostalgic. Yes, yes. So maybe one day we'll all be we'll back together again. I'm sure we will. <laughs> but for now, let's use this as a, as a fun comparison because we really have made that transition for now from seeing each other in, in the physical world. And conferences is a great example, I think, because now we're attending conferences virtually. Mm. But I think the analogy still holds true. So let's walk through a couple of key pieces of attending a conference and see how it's like single sign-on. Right. I want to walk you through the part where you first get to the conference and you have to you have to you have to go get your badge and then we'll talk about how you can move around the conference and and how that badge helps you do that and then we'll get into even more of it but one step at a time mm -hmm. so there you are you've arrived at the conference and you're really excited to go and see that first session or explore the trade room floor but what's going to happen if you just walk into the hotel or the venue and just head straight for the expo fraser are you going to be able to get in probably not <laughs> <laughs> because of course, what's what's the one thing that we, we always have to do when we go to a conference? The very first thing is we have to go find that registration area. We have to wait in line and get the right line mm -hmm. and show them our some sort of ID, some sort of credential that was issued by a higher power, usually a local government. And in turn, we get a lanyard, something like this uh, that I've saved with a, with a nice little thing hanging around it. And it has our name on it and it has some other pieces. And so this is the part um, of the analogy that is basically logging on or getting access to your application in the digital world. And what's happening here is you are proving that you are who you say you are. You've registered probably in advance and now you show up and say, hey, it's me. And, in, and instead of using something like this, enter a password, you're pulling out your driver's license, your passport, whatever it may be. And someone is looking at that, comparing it to the information that you signed up with and saying, okay, 
I trust that you are authentic. And that's a word we like to use in identity space, authentication. Mm. You're basically authenticating. Um, and based on that, you're going to get something back. You're going to get a token in the digital world. And in the physical world, you're going to get one of these. And you're going to put it on. And you're going to be wearing it. And this is showing that you've been authenticated. Nice. Makes okay? sense. So that's, that's the first step. <laughs> these badges have different things on them. They have different attributes. Now we're in the physical world again. So when you want to go and walk into that expo hall, or you want to walk into a talk that you had to have a certain level of registration to get, you'll see something, uh, you'll see various different things on the badges. So here you see on this one from a Ford Rock Identity Live a while back, it's VIP access. So that pretty much means when someone sees that I can go wherever I want. You may also have a badge that has a speaker tab on it, and that says that I'm I'm speaking, so I may be able to access something more, maybe the speaker's lounge. Mm -hmm. And so this, this part of being authenticated, the permissions are assigned at the time that this is issued to me. The sticker is on here, or these things are printed on my badge. And so that is going to determine what I'm allowed to do once I'm roaming around the halls of the conference, right? And so let's let's say I'm doing that now. I've got my badge on, I've got my swag, got my backpack or whatever they gave me so I can collect all the free giveaways <laughs> from the booths. And I walk into the, ex the expo hall and I just walk right through. Even though there's someone sitting at the door um, watching everyone who comes in, they're looking to see one, do you have the right type of badge that, that is expected for this conference? And two, if it's before expo hours, maybe it needs to say exhibitor, or if it's during Expo hours, it just needs to have you know a basic badge or say Expo Pass. But those attributes determine determine now what you're authorized to do. And so authorization, another fun um, term from the identity access management world, but it's really around um, what are you allowed to do. Right. So if you're trying to go to the speaker's lounge and you don't have the speaker tab, somebody might say, "Hey, hold on a second. Or if you are um, you know going to the Expo Hall before hours, um, then you're able to e either able to get access or not. But the point is, if you have that attribute, you walk right through. So if we bring that back to the digital world and single sign on, when you do that authentication, that login for the first time, you get a digital token, and it has different attributes on it like that. And those allow you to seamlessly just load up the next site or the next app and the next site and get into it without being asked for anything because what's needed is in that token and off you go. And it's a great experience because you don't have to try to trot out your different ID and password for every single application that you're going to. It makes it easy for you. And you're not forgetting those passwords and having to call the help desk and try to have a password reset and all the things that go along with that, which can get really expensive for an organization. Mm. Sure. And so I love this analogy, by the way. <laughs> it's really great. <laughs> it's but fun, I, right? Yeah, really fun. <laughs> but how how would you make that work? What about privacy? How does that tie into yeah. everything? You know, security and privacy uh, is just as important, right? And it's always important to balance the, to strike the right balance between security, experience, and privacy. So mm -hmm. let's wind back the clock a second to when we went and we showed our information, our, let's say our passport, prove who we are to get this, this here lanyard. Now, when we registered and when that person looked at our information, they have in the registration record, probably the company that we work for, obviously our name, but probably things like our work address, our home address, our phone number, and other things like that. But what actually goes on to the credential that we get to use is limited. This one just has my first and last name and my company. It doesn't have my phone number. It doesn't have other information by which you could reach me. And so when I go from booth to booth and 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 let's say in this one, uh, they could scan this, this badge wirelessly or they could scan a QR code. What mm -hmm. they're going to get anywhere in that expo hall is probably my name my company and my email address. And that depends on which country I'm in, what the local laws are around. I have to definitely consent that they can even use that information. So yeah. in the world of the conference land, the what, what all the conference scores can get is limited, even though what the registration desk has is more of your full information. Now, interesting in single sign-on, you could do the same thing. You can, you can implement the, the right type of privacy settings so that only a certain amount of information about you, only the right information or the agreed upon information in advance is allowed to be in that token. So it's just enough to know that this is the person who they say they are, this is their account 
or whatever, but this isn't every single bit of information about them. And you can control that with your single sign-on digital version of this. Okay, and I've heard of federated single sign-on as well. What, yes. What, what is that? And, and then how do you tie that into your analogy? <laughs> Yeah, so federated is is a strong and a very important part of single sign-on. And let's talk about that back in terms of the conference. What's what's something that we really like about going to some of these conferences? It's the after parties that are thrown <laughs> by some of the sponsors, right? Sure. And so I think I think that all of us have had that experience where there's some really cool restaurant and it's up in a you know in a, in a large VIP room or at the hotel, wherever it is. And you get invited to this party and you get to go. And how do you get in? Well, you do, you have this badge. And so this introduces this concept of a chain of trust. All right. And this is sort of the third piece in that. When mm. I first get my conference badge because I showed them my, my ID, now there's a chain of trust between my ID and this. And when I'm walking into the expo hall or into the speaker's lounge, they say, I trust that that's you because you, you have this uh, hanging around your neck. Similarly, my name has been added to a list, no doubt, in most cases at this restaurant or at this VIP place. And when they see that I have this badge and that my name matches the name that's on their list, now I'm able to get in. And that person who works at the restaurant has no direct affiliation with the conference. They trust because they see this badge at the moment in time, which is the right time, which is another important piece, and I'm allowed to get up. So federated single sign-on and federation in general, it's all about trust. Do I trust what's being presented to me um, in the form of a, a token or a credential uh, in order to allow this person to pass? And, you know, uh, stepping away from the conference analogy for just a second, I think the passport is another great analogy that everybody gets because we all, most of us all have one. And that is when I show up um, and I'm coming to visit you, Fraser, in the UK and I, I show my passport, they're going to look at that paper document, which has a bunch of anti-fraud protections on it. And they're going to say, I trust that this is you because it was issued by another part, by another authority that I trust. Right. And so that's, that's that chain of trust again. Now, one more thing around all of this federation and all this single sign-on, what about when the party ends? What about when it's over and this thing expires and I take it off? The other interesting thing about single sign-on is that you can shut it down from one place because you authenticated from one place and this digital version of this can expire and then it's not good anymore and you would have to go get another one. Right. So I can't show up to next week's event with this credential and get in because they'll say, no, that doesn't fit. That's not right. So once it's done and this is expired, all of the other things that I was able to get in in a single sign-on way, both in the conference and in the digital world, suddenly I'm out. And that's where the increased security comes in because we have one place to cancel that credential or it expires or times out. So that if you show up to that restaurant and the next day and you're like, I'm just going up to this VIP room, they're like, nope, no, you're not. That <laughs> that credential was from yesterday. Get out of here, man. Before I, <laughs> you're not allowed in. And that's that's really how it works in the digital world as well. You have the ability for, for your token to time out. You have the anti-fraud um, you know, via encryption capabilities for that token so someone can't just take it because by the way you know sometimes people have been known to take off a lanyard and give it to someone else to act on their behalf and we have to be able to protect from that as well sure ashley that was amazing i had no idea i would have such a pang for <laughs> trade shows and conferences <laughs> but there we go talking right? about it, it's just like got me in the mood but what an amazing analogy and what an amazing way of, of explaining sso to us so thank you so much for doing that ashley and it's been great to have you on today thanks fraser it's been a lot of fun being with you today guys i'm sure you enjoyed that and if you did make sure to check out some of our other episodes there is a link up in the top left corner and uh, you can enjoy that but for now now I'll just say thanks for joining us and see you next time.